OLED, Wikipedia article audio. An organic light emitting diode is a light emitting diode in which the emissive electroluminescent layer is a film of organic compound that emits light in response to an electric current. This layer of organic semiconductor is situated between two electrodes, typically, at least one of these electrodes is transparent. OLEDs are used to create digital displays in devices such as television screens, computer monitors, portable systems such as mobile phones, handheld game consoles and PDAs. A major area of research is the development of white OLED devices for use in solid-state lighting applications. History The first practical OLEDs Working principle Carrier balance Material technologies Small molecules Polymer light-emitting diodes Phosphorescent materials Device architectures Structure Patterning technologies Backplane technologies Fabrication Advantages Disadvantages Manufacturers and commercial uses Fashion Samsung applications Sony applications LG applications Mitsubishi applications Recom group slash video name tag applications Automotive Dell Apple Research There are two main families of OLED those based on small molecules and those employing polymers. Adding mobile ions to an OLED creates a light-emitting electrochemical cell which has a slightly different mode of operation. An OLED display can be driven with a passive matrix or active matrix control scheme. In the PMOLD scheme, each row in the display is controlled sequentially, one by one, whereas a mold control uses a thin film transistor backplane to directly access and switch each individual pixel on or off, allowing for higher resolution and larger display sizes. An OLED display works without a backlight because it emits visible light. Thus, it can display deep black levels and can be thinner and lighter than a liquid crystal display. In low ambient light conditions, an OLED screen can achieve a higher contrast ratio than an LCD, regardless of whether the LCD uses cold cathode fluorescent lamps or an LED backlight. André Bernanos and co-workers at the Nancy University in France made the first observations of electroluminescence in organic materials in the early 1950s. They applied high alternating voltages in air to materials such as acridine orange, either deposited on or dissolved in cellulose or cellophane thin films. The proposed mechanism was either direct excitation of the dye molecules or excitation of electrons. In 1960 Martin Pope and some of his co-workers at New York University developed ohmic dark injecting electrode contacts to organic crystals. They further described the necessary energetic requirements for whole and electron injecting electrode contacts. These contacts are the basis of charge injection in all modern OLED devices. Pope's group also first observed direct current electroluminescence under vacuum on a single pure crystal of anthracene and on anthracene crystals doped with tetracene in 1963 using a small area silver electrode at 400 volts. The proposed mechanism was field accelerated electron excitation of molecular fluorescence. Pope's group reported in 1965 that in the absence of an external electric field, the electroluminescence in anthracene crystals is caused by the recombination of a thermalized electron and hole, 
and that the conducting level of anthracene is higher in energy than the exciton energy level. Also in 1965, W. Helfrich and W. G. Schneider of the National Research Council in Canada produced double injection recombination electroluminescence for the first time in an anthracene single crystal using hole and electron injecting electrodes, the forerunner of modern double injection devices. In the same year, Dow Chemical researchers patented a method of preparing electroluminescent cells using high-voltage AC-driven electrically insulated 1 mm thin layers of a melted phosphor consisting of ground anthracene powder, tetracene, and graphite powder. Their proposed mechanism involved electronic excitation at the contacts between the graphite particles and the anthracene molecules. Roger Partridge made the first observation of electroluminescence from polymer films at the National Physical Laboratory in the United Kingdom. The device consisted of a film of poly up to 2.2 micrometers thick located between two charge injecting electrodes. The results of the project were patented in 1975 and published in 1983. American physical chemist Ching W. Tang and Stephen Van Slyke at Eastman Kodak built the first practical OLED device in 1987. This device used a two-layer structure with separate hole transporting and electron transporting layers such that recombination and light emission occurred in the middle of the organic layer, this resulted in a reduction in operating voltage and improvements in efficiency. Research into polymer electroluminescence culminated in 1990 with J. H. Burroughs ETAL at the Cavendish Laboratory at Cambridge University, UK, reporting a high-efficiency green light-emitting polymer-based device using 100 nm thick films of poly. Moving from molecular to macromolecular materials solved the problems previously encountered with the long-term stability of the organic films and enabled high-quality films to be easily made. Subsequent research developed multi-layer polymers and the new field of plastic electronics and OLED research and device production grew rapidly. Universal Display Corporation holds the majority of patents concerning the commercialization of OLEDs. A typical OLED is composed of a layer of organic materials situated between two electrodes, the anode and cathode, all deposited on a substrate. The organic molecules are electrically conductive as a result of delocalization of pi electrons caused by conjugation over part or all of the molecule. These materials have conductivity levels ranging from insulators to conductors, and are therefore considered organic semiconductors. The highest occupied and lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals of organic semiconductors are analogous to the valence and conduction bands of inorganic semiconductors. Originally, the most basic polymer OLEDs consisted of a single organic layer. One example was the first light-emitting device synthesized by J. H. Burroughs ETAL, which involved a single layer of poly. However multi-layer OLEDs can be fabricated with two or more layers in order to improve device efficiency. As well as conductive properties, different materials may be chosen to aid charge injection at electrodes by providing a more gradual electronic profile, or block a charge from reaching the opposite electrode and being wasted. Many modern OLEDs incorporate a simple bilayer structure consisting of a conductive layer and an emissive layer. More recent developments in OLED architecture improves quantum efficiency by using a graded heterojunction. In the graded heterojunction architecture, the composition of hole and electron transport materials varies continuously within the emissive layer with a dopant emitter. The graded heterojunction architecture combines the benefits of both conventional architectures by improving charge injection while simultaneously balancing charge transport within the emissive region.
During operation, a voltage is applied across the OLED such that the anode is positive with respect to the cathode. Anodes are picked based upon the quality of their optical transparency, electrical conductivity, and chemical stability. A current of electrons flows through the device from cathode to anode, as electrons are injected into the LUMO of the organic layer at the cathode and withdrawn from the HOMO at the anode. This latter process may also be described as the injection of electron holes into the HOMO. Electrostatic forces bring the electrons and the holes towards each other and they recombine forming an exciton, a bound state of the electron and hole. This happens closer to the emissive layer, because in organic semiconductors holes are generally more mobile than electrons. The decay of this excited state results in a relaxation of the energy levels of the electron accompanied by emission of radiation whose frequency is in the visible region. The frequency of this radiation depends on the band gap of the material, in this case the difference in energy between the HOMO and LUMO. As electrons and holes are fermions with half-integer spin, an exciton may either be in a singlet state or a triplet state depending on how the spins of the electron and hole have been combined. Statistically three triplet excitons will be formed for each singlet exciton. Decay from triplet states is spin forbidden, increasing the timescale of the transition and limiting the internal efficiency of fluorescent devices. Phosphorescent organic light emitting diodes make use of spin orbit interactions to facilitate inter-system crossing between singlet and triplet states thus obtaining emission from both singlet and triplet states and improving the internal efficiency. Indium tin oxide is commonly used as the anode material. It is transparent to visible light and has a high work function which promotes injection of holes into the HOMO level of the organic layer. A typical conductive layer may consist of P.PSS as the HOMO level of this material generally lies between the work function of ITO and the HOMO of other commonly used polymers, reducing the energy barriers for hole injection. Metals such as barium and calcium are often used for the cathode as they have low work functions which promote injection of electrons into the LUMO of the organic layer. Such metals are reactive so they require a capping layer of aluminium to avoid degradation. Experimental research has proven that the properties of the anode, specifically the anode-slash-hole transport layer interface topography plays a major role in the efficiency, performance, and lifetime of organic light-emitting diodes. Imperfections in the surface of the anode decrease anode organic film interface adhesion, increase electrical resistance, and allow for more frequent formation of non-emissive dark spots in the OLED material adversely affecting lifetime. Mechanisms to decrease anode roughness for ito glass substrates include the use of thin films and self-assembled monolayers. Also, Alternative substrates and anode materials are being considered to increase OLED performance and lifetime. Possible examples include single crystal sapphire substrates treated with gold film anodes yielding lower work functions, operating voltages, electrical resistance values, and increasing lifetime of OLEDs. Single carrier devices are typically used to study the kinetics and charge transport mechanisms of an organic material and can be useful when trying to study energy transfer processes. As current through the device is composed of only one type of charge carrier, either electrons or holes, recombination does not occur and no light is emitted. For example, Electron-only devices can be obtained by replacing ITO with a lower work function metal which increases the energy barrier of hole injection. Similarly, hole-only devices can be made by using a cathode made solely of aluminium, resulting in an energy barrier too large for efficient electron injection.
Balanced charge injection and transfer are required to get high internal efficiency, pure emission of luminance layer without contaminated emission from charge transporting layers, and high stability. A common way to balance charge is optimizing the thickness of the charge transporting layers but is hard to control. Another way is using the exiplex. Exiplex formed between hole transporting and electron transporting side chains to localize electron hole pairs. Energy is then transferred to luminophore and provide high efficiency. An example of using exiplex is grafting oxidiazole and carbazole side units in red dictopyrolopyrol doped copolymer main chain shows improved external quantum efficiency and color purity in no optimized OLED. Efficient OLEDs using small molecules were first developed by Ching W. Tang ETAL at Eastman Kodak. The term OLED traditionally refers specifically to this type of device, though the term SMOLED is also in use. Molecules commonly used in OLEDs include organometallic chelates, fluorescent and phosphorescent dyes and conjugated dendrimers. A number of materials are used for their charge transport properties, for example triphenylamine and derivatives are commonly used as materials for hole transport layers. Fluorescent dyes can be chosen to obtain light emission at different wavelengths, and compounds such as perylene, rubrine, and quinacridone derivatives are often used. ALK3 has been used as a green emitter electron transport material and as a host for yellow and red emitting dyes. The production of small molecule devices and displays usually involves thermal evaporation in a vacuum. This makes the production process more expensive and of limited use for large area devices, than other processing techniques. However, contrary to polymer-based devices, the vacuum deposition process enables the formation of well-controlled, homogeneous films, and the construction of very complex multi-layer structures. This high flexibility in layer design, enabling distinct charge transport and charge blocking layers to be formed, is the main reason for the high efficiencies of the small molecule OLEDs. Coherent emission from a laser dye-doped tandem SMOLED device, excited in the pulsed regime, has been demonstrated. The emission is nearly diffraction limited with a spectral width similar to that of broadband dye lasers. Researchers report luminescence from a single polymer molecule, representing the smallest possible organic light-emitting diode device. Scientists will be able to optimize substances to produce more powerful light emissions. Finally, this work is a first step towards making molecule-sized components that combine electronic and optical properties. Similar components could form the basis of a molecular computer. Polymer light-emitting diodes, also light-emitting polymers, involve an electroluminescent conductive polymer that emits light when connected to an external voltage. They are used as a thin film for full-spectrum color displays. Polymer OLEDs are quite efficient and require a relatively small amount of power for the amount of light produced. Vacuum deposition is not a suitable method for forming thin films of polymers. However, Polymers can be processed in solution, and spin coating is a common method of depositing thin polymer films. This method is more suited to forming large area films than thermal evaporation. No vacuum is required, and the emissive materials can also be applied on the substrate by a technique derived from commercial inkjet printing. However, as the application of subsequent layers tends to dissolve those already present, formation of multi-layer structures is difficult with these methods. The metal cathode may still need to be deposited by thermal evaporation in vacuum.
An alternative method to vacuum deposition is to deposit a Langmuir blotchet film. Typical polymers used in pleated displays include derivatives of poly and polyfluorine. Substitution of side chains onto the polymer backbone may determine the color of emitted light or the stability and solubility of the polymer for performance and ease of processing. While unsubstituted poly is typically insoluble, a number of PPVs and related polys that are soluble in organic solvents or water have been prepared via ring opening metathesis polymerization. These water soluble polymers or conjugated polyelectrolytes also can be used as whole injection layers alone or in combination with nanoparticles like graphene. Phosphorescent organic light emitting diodes use the principle of electrophosphorescence to convert electrical energy in an OLED into light in a highly efficient manner, with the internal quantum efficiencies of such devices approaching 100%. Typically, a polymer such as poly is used as a host material to which an organometallic complex is added as a dopant. Iridium complexes such as IR3 are currently the focus of research, although complexes based on other heavy metals such as platinum have also been used. The heavy metal atom at the center of these complexes exhibits strong spin-orbit coupling, facilitating inter-system crossing between singlet and triplet states. By using these phosphorescent materials, both singlet and triplet excitons will be able to decay radiatively, hence improving the internal quantum efficiency of the device compared to a standard OLED where only the singlet states will contribute to emission of light. Applications of OLEDs in solid-state lighting require the achievement of high brightness with good CIE coordinates. The use of macromolecular species like polyhedral oligomeric sil sesquioxanes in conjunction with the use of phosphorescent species such as IR for printed OLEDs have exhibited brightnesses as high as 10,000 CD M2. Patternable organic light emitting devices use a light or heat activated electroactive layer. A latent material is included in this layer that, upon activation, becomes highly efficient as a whole injection layer. Using this process, light emitting devices with arbitrary patterns can be prepared. Color patterning can be accomplished by means of laser, such as radiation-induced sublimation transfer. Organic vapor jet printing uses an inert carrier gas, such as argon or nitrogen to transport evaporated organic molecules. The gas is expelled through a micrometer-sized nozzle or nozzle array close to the substrate as it is being translated. This allows printing arbitrary multi-layer patterns without the use of solvents. Conventional OLED displays are formed by vapor thermal evaporation and are patterned by shadow mask. A mechanical mask has openings allowing the vapor to pass only on the desired location. Like inkjet material depositioning, inkjet etching deposits precise amounts of solvent onto a substrate designed to selectively dissolve the substrate material and induce a structure or pattern. Inkjet etching of polymer layers in OLEDs can be used to increase the overall outcoupling efficiency. In OLEDs, light produced from the emissive layers of the OLED is partially transmitted out of the device and partially trapped inside the device by total internal reflection. This trapped light is wave-guided along the interior of the device until it reaches an edge where it is dissipated by either absorption or emission. Inkjet etching can be used to selectively alter the polymeric layers of OLED structures to decrease overall tear and increase outcoupling efficiency of the OLED. Compared to a non-etched polymer layer, the structured polymer layer in the OLED structure from the IJE process helps to decrease the tear of the OLED device. 
IJE solvents are commonly organic instead of water-based due to their non-acidic nature and ability to effectively dissolve materials at temperatures under the boiling point of water. For a high-resolution display like a TV, a TFT backplane is necessary to drive the pixels correctly. Currently, low-temperature polycrystalline silicon thin film transistor is used for commercial AMOLED displays. LTPS TFT has variation of the performance in a display, so various compensation circuits have been reported. Due to the size limitation of the excimer laser used for LTPS, the AMOLED size was limited. To cope with the hurdle related to the panel size, amorphous silicon slash microcrystalline silicon backplanes have been reported with large display prototype demonstrations. Transfer printing is an emerging technology to assemble large numbers of parallel OLED and AMOLED devices efficiently. It takes advantage of standard metal deposition, photolithography, and etching to create alignment marks commonly on glass or other device substrates. Thin polymer adhesive layers are applied to enhance resistance to particles and surface defects. Microscale ICS are transfer printed onto the adhesive surface and then baked to fully cure adhesive layers. An additional photosensitive polymer layer is applied to the substrate to account for the topography caused by the printed ICS, reintroducing a flat surface. Photolithography and etching removes some polymer layers to uncover conductive pads on the ICS. Afterwards, the anode layer is applied to the device backplane to form bottom electrode. OLED layers are applied to the anode layer with conventional vapor deposition, and covered with a conductive metal electrode layer. As of 2011 transfer printing was capable to print onto target substrates up to 500 mm x 400 mm. This size limit needs to expand for transfer printing to become a common process for the fabrication of large OLED slash AMOLED displays. The different manufacturing process of OLEDs lends itself to several advantages over flat panel displays made with LCD technology. OLED technology is used in commercial applications such as displays for mobile phones and portable digital media players, car radios, and digital cameras among others, as well as lighting. Such portable display applications favor the high light output of OLEDs for readability in sunlight and their low power drain. Portable displays are also used intermittently so the lower lifespan of organic displays is less of an issue. Prototypes have been made of flexible and rollable displays which use OLED's unique characteristics. Applications in flexible signs and lighting are also being developed. OLED lighting offers several advantages over LED lighting, such as higher quality illumination, more diffuse light source, and panel shapes. Philips Lighting have made OLED lighting samples under the brand name Lumi Blade available online and Novald AG based in Dresden, Germany, introduced a line of OLED desk lamps called Victory in September, 2011. Nokia introduced OLED mobile phones including the N85 and the N868 MP, both of which feature an AMOLED display. OLEDs have also been used in most Motorola and Samsung color cell phones, as well as some HTC, LG, and Sony Ericsson models. OLED technology can also be found in digital media players such as the Creative Zen V, the iRiver Claw, the Zune HD and the Sony Walkman X series. The Google and HTC Nexus One smartphone includes an AMOLED screen as does HTC's own Desire and Legend phones. However, due to supply shortages of the Samsung-produced displays, certain HTC models will use Sony's SLCD displays in the future, 
while the Google and Samsung Nexus S smartphone will use super clear LCD instead in some countries. OLED displays were used in watches made by Fossil and Diesel. Other manufacturers of OLED panels include Annual Technologies Limited, Ooptronics, Chime Inolux Corporation, LG, and others. In 2009, Shearwater Research introduced the Predator as the first color OLED diving computer available with a user replaceable battery. DuPont stated in a press release in May 2010 that they can produce a 50 inch OLED TV in two minutes with a new printing technology. If this can be scaled up in terms of manufacturing, then the total cost of OLED TVs would be greatly reduced. DuPont also states that OLED TVs made with this less expensive technology can last up to 15 years if left on for a normal 8-hour day. The use of OLEDs may be subject to patents held by Universal Display Corporation, Eastman Kodak, DuPont, General Electric, Royal Philips Electronics, numerous universities, and others. There are by now thousands of patents associated with OLEDs, both from larger corporations and smaller technology companies. BlackBerry Limited, the maker of BlackBerry smartphones, uses OLED displays in their BlackBerry 10 devices. Flexible OLED displays are already being produced and these are used by manufacturers to create curved displays such as the Galaxy S7 Edge but so far there they are not in devices that can be flexed by the consumer. Apart from the screen itself the circuit boards and batteries would need to be flexible. Samsung demonstrated a rollout display in 2016. Textiles incorporating OLEDs are an innovation in the fashion world and pose for a way to integrate lighting to bring inert objects to a whole new level of fashion. The hope is to combine the comfort and low-cost properties of textile with the OLED's properties of illumination and low energy consumption. Although this scenario of illuminated clothing is highly plausible, challenges are still a roadblock. Some issues include, the lifetime of the OLED, rigidness of flexible foil substrates, and the lack of research in making more fabric-like photonic textiles. By 2004 Samsung, South Korea's largest conglomerate, was the world's largest OLED manufacturer, producing 40% of the OLED displays made in the world and as of 2010 has a 98% share of the global AMOLED market. The company is leading the world of OLED industry, generating $100.2 million out of the total $475 million revenues in the global OLED market in 2006. As of 2006, it held more than 600 American patents and more than 2,800 international patents, making it the largest owner of a mold technology patents. Samsung SDI announced in 2005 the world's largest OLED TV at the time, at 21 inches. This OLED featured the highest resolution at the time, of 6.22 million pixels. In addition, the company adopted active matrix-based technology for its low power consumption and high resolution qualities. This was exceeded in January 2008, when Samsung showcased the world's largest and thinnest OLED TV at the time, at 31 inches and 4.3 millimeters. In May 2008, Samsung unveiled an ultra-thin 12.1-inch laptop OLED display concept, with a 1,280x768 resolution with infinite contrast ratio. According to Wu Zhongli, Vice President of the Mobile Display Marketing Team at Samsung SDI, 
the company expected OLED displays to be used in notebook PCs as soon as 2010. In October 2008, Samsung showcased the world's thinnest OLED display, also the first to be flappable and bendable. It measures just 0.05 mm, yet a Samsung staff member said that it is technically possible to make the panel thinner. To achieve this thickness, Samsung etched an OLED panel that uses a normal glass substrate. The drive circuit was formed by low-temperature polysilicon TFTs. Also, low-molecular organic L materials were employed. The pixel count of the display is 480 times 272. The contrast ratio is 100,000,1, and the luminance is 200 cd m2. The color reproduction range is 100% of the NTSC standard. In the same month, Samsung unveiled what was then the world's largest OLED television at 40 inch with a full HD resolution of 1920 times 1080 pixels. In the FPD International, Samsung stated that its 40-inch OLED panel is the largest size currently possible. The panel has a contrast ratio of 1,000,000,000,1, a color gamut of 107% NTSC, and a luminance of 200 cd m 2 at the Consumer Electronics Show in January 2010, Samsung demonstrated a laptop computer with a large, transparent OLED display featuring up to 40% transparency and an animated OLED display in a photo ID card. Samsung's latest AMOLED smartphones use their Super AMOLED trademark with the Samsung Wave S8500 and Samsung i9000 Galaxy S being launched in June 2010. In January 2011 Samsung announced their Super AMOLED Plus displays, which offer several advances over the older Super AMOLED displays, real stripe matrix, thinner form factor, brighter image, and an 18% reduction in energy consumption. At CES 2012, Samsung introduced the first 55 TV screen that uses Super OLED technology. On January 8, 2013, at CES Samsung unveiled a unique curved 4K Ultra S9 OLED television, which they state provides an IMAX-like experience for viewers. On August 13, 2013, Samsung announced availability of a 55-inch curved OLED TV in the U.S. at a price point of $8,999.99. On September 6, 2013, Samsung launched its 55-inch curved OLED TV in the United Kingdom with John Lewis. Samsung introduced the Galaxy Round smartphone in the Korean market in October 2013. The device features a 1080p screen, measuring 5.7 inches, that curves on the vertical axis in a rounded case. The corporation has promoted the following advantages, a new feature called Round Interaction that allows users to look at information by tilting the handset on a flat surface with the screen off, and the feel of one continuous transition when the user switches between home screens. The Sony CLIEPEG VZ90 was released in 2004, being the first PDA to feature an OLED screen. Other Sony products to feature OLED screens include the MZRH1 Portable Mini Disc Recorder, released in 2006 and the Walkman X series. At the 2007 Las Vegas Consumer Electronics Show, Sony showcased 11-inch and 27-inch.
full HD resolution at 1920 x 1080 OLED TV models. Both claimed 1,000,000,000 colon 1 contrast ratios and total thicknesses of 5 mm. In April 2007, Sony announced it would manufacture 1,011-inch OLED TVs per month for market testing purposes. On October 1, 2007, Sony announced that the 11-inch model, now called the XEL1, would be released commercially. The XEL1 was first released in Japan in December 2007. In May 2007, Sony publicly unveiled a video of a 2.5-inch flexible OLED screen which is only 0.3 mm thick. At the Display 2008 exhibition, Sony demonstrated a 0.2 mm thick 3.5-inch display with a resolution of 320 x 200 pixels and a 0.3 mm thick 11-inch display with 960 x 540 pixels resolution, one-tenth the thickness of the XEL1. In July 2008, a Japanese government body said it would fund a joint project of leading firms which is to develop a key technology to produce large, energy-saving organic displays. The project involves one laboratory and ten companies including Sony Corp. Nido said the project was aimed at developing a core technology to mass-produce 40-inch or larger OLED displays in the late 2010s. In October 2008, Sony published results of research it carried out with the Max Planck Institute over the possibility of mass market bending displays, which could replace rigid LCDs and plasma screens. Eventually, bendable, see through displays could be stacked to produce 3D images with much greater contrast ratios and viewing angles than existing products. Sony exhibited a 24.5 prototype OLED 3D television during the Consumer Electronics Show in January 2010. In January 2011, Sony announced the PlayStation Vita handheld game console will feature a 5 inch OLED screen. On February 17, 2011, Sony announced its 25 OLED professional reference monitor aimed at the cinema and high-end drama post-production market. On June 25, 2012, Sony and Panasonic announced a joint venture for creating low-cost mass-production OLED televisions by 2013. As of 2010, LG Electronics produced one model of OLED television, the 15-inch 15EL9500 and had announced a 31 OLED 3D television for March 2011. On December 26, 2011, LG officially announced the world's largest 55 OLED panel and featured it at CES 2012. In late 2012, LG announces the launch of the 55EM9600 OLED television in Australia. In January 2015, LG Display signed a long-term agreement with Universal Display Corporation for the supply of OLED materials and the right to use their patented OLED emitters. By 2017 brands using LG OLED panels include Panasonic, Sony, Toshiba, Philips, and Lowy. Lumiotech is the first company in the world developing and selling, since January 2011, mass-produced OLED lighting panels with such brightness and long lifetime. Lumiotech is a joint venture of Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, Rome, Toppen Printing, and Mitsui NCO. On June 1, 2011, Mitsubishi installed a 6-meter OLED sphere in Tokyo's Science Museum. 
On January 6, 2011, Los Angeles-based technology company Recom Group introduced the first small-screen consumer application of the OLED at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. This was a 2.8 OLED display being used as a wearable video name tag. At the Consumer Electronics Show in 2012, Recom Group introduced the world's first video mic flag incorporating three 2.8 OLED displays on a standard broadcaster's mic flag. The video mic flag allowed video content and advertising to be shown on a broadcaster's standard mic flag. Yet the number of automakers using OLEDs is still rare and limited to the high end of the market. For example, the 2010 Lexus RX features an OLED display instead of a thin film transistor display. The Aston Martin DB9 incorporated the first automotive application of the OLED display, namely PMOLD, then followed by 2004 on Jeep Grand Cherokee and Chevrolet Corvette C6. Japanese manufacturer Pioneer Electronics produced first car stereos with monochrome OLED displays. The 2015 Hyundai Sonata and Kia Soul EV uses a 3.5 white mold display. BMW plans to use OLEDs in tail lights and interior lights in their future cars, however. OLEDs are currently too dim to be used for brake lights, headlights, and indicators. On January 6, 2016, Dell announced the UltraSharp UP3017Q OLED monitor at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. The monitor was announced to feature a 34K UHD OLED panel with a 120Hz refresh rate. 0.1 millisecond response time, and a contrast ratio of 400,000 The monitor was set to sell at a price of $4,999 and release in March, 2016, just a few months later. As the end of March rolled around, the monitor was not released to the market and Dell did not speak on reasons for the delay. Reports suggested that Dell cancelled the monitor as the company was unhappy with the image quality of the OLED panel, especially the amount of color drift that it displayed when you viewed the monitor from the sides. On April 13, 2017, Dell finally released the UP3017Q OLED monitor to the market at a price of $3,499. In addition to the price drop, the monitor featured a 60 Hz refresh rate and a contrast ratio of 1,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,